In 1999, Dr. Gary Schwartz, who received his PhD from Harvard, carried out four experiments in which he graded the accuracy of some of the world's most famous psychic performers at up to 90%. The following video shows why I grade the same results at closer to 0%. The HBO Dream Team experiment was covered in the video Life After Life. Whereas all of the experiments were documented in varying degrees in Schwartz's book, The Afterlife Experiments. This book claims to provide breakthrough scientific evidence of life after death. In my opinion, it does no such thing. What is your percentage? What is your batting average? It's pretty high. I was a participant in the University of Arizona studies. Dr. Gary Schwartz and company did double-blind studies. And it was part of a, an HBO documentary called America Undercover, Life After Life. In February 1999, Dr. Schwartz conducted the HBO Dream Team experiment looking at whether consciousness survives death by using psychic performers. Schwartz rated some of the psychics' accuracy at 90%. Most of the psychics claim Schwartz's testing as validation of their psychic abilities. The five psychic performers were to individually read the two sitters, Patricia and Ronnie. This table shows approximately how many questions from each reading appeared in the book. Note that three of Ronnie's readings were not covered at all. I can find no photo of Ronnie or video of any of her two readings. I can find no complete transcripts or complete videos of the experiments. John Edward reads Patricia. At the start of the reading, Edward first references Patricia's dead husband. Patricia responds with yes. Edward says that her dead husband has visited her in spirit and had seen Patricia sniffing his clothes or something connected to him. Patricia responds with, oh yes. He tells Patricia that her husband was in a coma before he died. Patricia answers, yes. He asks if her husband had a dog and says that her husband's passing was quick and peaceful. Edward tells Patricia that her dead husband has been able to connect with his dead mother on the other side. Patricia says, yeah. Edward tells her, this is important. Her dead husband is talking about some blackness to the chest. Edward says this could indicate a heavy respiratory problem for her dead husband, his mother, and or a brother or brother-in-law. Edward asks Patricia if she understands. Patricia says yes. Schwartz then states that Edward has achieved a yes after yes after yes, and that the number of affirmative answers appeared well above 80%. The one slight problem, Patricia's husband Mike, who was alive, had been waiting in a nearby room during her reading. In my opinion, and because the husband was alive, I graded Edward as getting no correct answers. This also highlights the problem that when analyzing a reading, we cannot always be sure a sitter is correctly answering, yes. In the HBO program, Life After Life, Edward's statements about a blackness to the chest appear to be taken out of context. Based on the book, and as mentioned earlier, immediately before this clip, Edward talked about Patricia's dead husband, her husband's mother and a brother or brother-in-law. At no stage does he mention a father. He then says that Patricia's dead husband is talking about a blackness to the chest. Yet the video makes it appear as if Edward is talking about the father. He's talking about some blackness to the chest, which to me would indicate either lung cancer or emphysema, some type of heavy respiratory problem filling up with fluids. The video cuts off before Edward finishes his statement, saying this could indicate a respiratory problem connected to one of these people. At no stage did he mention a father. In the afterlife video, it appears that Edward makes another hit regarding the son shooting himself. Somebody passes that I feel as being like, boom, they go out, boom. It's like a big explosion or there's some type of big boom that happens. This clip also appears to have been taken out of context. Edward earlier spoke about a brother or son connected to the husband, not to Patricia. Apparently moving on, Edward then says, Somebody passes that I feel is being like boom. Note he said somebody. He did not say a young male or son had passed with a boom. In Chapter 12 of the Afterlife Experiments, Schwartz wrote, John reported that the son had gone out with a boom. 
That's not what Edward said on the video. Here is another look at that clip. Somebody passes that I feel as being like, boom. In the book regarding the HBO experiment, there is no mention of Edward talking about Patricia's son, yet the Afterlife video suggests he did. Now, is this your son that's passed? Yes. Okay, because he's jumping up and down. My God, he's making me feel like you need to know that he is here. At one stage, Schwartz says Edward has switched to the dead son without realizing it, but this still does not fit with this video. Suzanne Northrup reads Patricia. Like most other psychic performers, Susan Northrup first has to ask if a father is dead before she can say whether he is present. Your papa's gone, please. Your papa? Yes. Your father, papa's father. Note how Northrup has asked about the father, or grandfather. On getting a yes for the father, she continues. The father's been gone some time, they tell me, um, Patricia. She says that the father has been gone some time, but seconds earlier, until being told, she didn't know if the father was dead. And I don't know why, but your father gave you your name, because he says, I gave... There are a few videos of this reading, and the following one has been difficult to reconcile. In the book, Schwartz tells us that Northrop was wrong when she said the young boy was not Patricia's son. Yet the video makes it look as if Northrop was correct. Um, but I do hear an M name, so that's his name or whoever he's connected to. For this reading, the only time Northrop mentions an M name in the book is when she talks about Mark or Merritt. Northrop suggested it was a brother, not a son, and that they had died from a freak accident. Out of the approximately 46 questions, I graded Northrop as getting too correct. This was when she said the father smoked and the grandmother had false teeth. I grade Northrop's accuracy at approximately 4%. Schwartz scored Northrop's accuracy at around 80%. Lori Campbell reads Patricia. Campbell asked if Patricia had a grandfather in spirit. On being told yes, Campbell says that the grandfather is coming through with a lot of zest and energy, and was doing so from the minute he walked in the room. Yet she still had to ask if he was dead. I'll tell you, the other thing I got was a dog. I feel like there's a dog, and I want to tell you that I feel like the dog has wire hair. Does this make sense to you, yes or no? Yeah. Patricia had a chihuahua. Campbell then said the dog was a terrier, or a terrier cross. This is quite broad, and can cover many dogs, including Scottish Terriers and Bull Terriers. Schwartz said although the breed was wrong, the size and personality was accurate. Campbell asked if the mother was dead. On being told yes, she said the mother was coming through, beautifully. That the mother had full hair, then soft hair, then full again, then it didn't look real, then it was real thin. Campbell asked if her description fit. Patricia's mother had no hair towards the end of her life. Campbell asked if Patricia had a son that had passed. On being told yes, she asked. Was your son killed in an accident? No. Campbell incorrectly said the son had died from some kind of blood disease. Schwartz said that like the other mediums, Lori Campbell had made mistakes, but she had received a pattern of information that had fit Pat. Out of the limited number of Campbell's questions provided in the book, I graded Campbell as getting zero correct. And Gemin reads Patricia. Gemin spoke about a woman who had heart problems and a stroke. She then came up with a statement that Patricia said was deep and meaningful when she said, They tell me to tell you that you are never alone. You never walk alone, that they are with you. Coincidentally, at his first meeting with Alison Dubois, Schwartz was almost brought to tears when Dubois used a similar statement, saying to Schwartz, the deceased was saying, I don't walk alone. Schwartz's good friend had been confined to a wheelchair before her death, and Schwartz saw this as evidence of Dubois communicating with the dead. Could they have listened to Jerry and the pacemakers? Gemin said that the same entity is responsible for turning the lights off and on. It is unknown whether Schwartz tested this. She then said there was something about a dog. Gemin said she saw a woman who didn't like being called old. She did not say it was a mother, 
grandmother, or auntie. Yet once again, the afterlife video makes it appear that she did. But she also had a cough, a lot of coughing. <clears throat> she comes near me, I, I feel the... Gemin did not say it was the mother. Based on the questions provided in the book, I rated Gemin as getting zero correct. George Anderson reads Patricia. Gary Schwartz rated George Anderson as one of the highest scoring psychics. The afterlife video makes it look as if Anderson has scored an amazing hit. Now, I don't understand this, but your son also apologizes for his passing? Yes. He does take his own life, correct? Correct. Schwartz writes about this hit. A chill ran through my body at this stunning, awful revelation. Yet Schwartz had heard Anderson's earlier statement when Anderson had suggested the son's death was beyond his own control. The book has the following statement, your son claims he passed tragically, yes? Which then leads to the following statement from Anderson. He also says beyond his control. Do you understand? No. Patricia had provided a clue that her son had most likely taken his own life. Suddenly, Anderson's great hit is not all that great. Yet Schwartz concluded that Anderson had become more specific. George Anderson reads Ronnie. Anderson's reading of Ronnie was one of the more detailed readings in the book. I could find no video of Ronnie or video of this reading. Anderson talks about a young male presence being around Ronnie. Not getting a positive response, he tells Ronnie. Don't deny or don't say anything. Just leave it alone. Does this mean Schwartz does not grade this as being incorrect? Anderson again appears to instruct his sitter not to say no when he asks Ronnie about an Uncle Sam. Anderson tells Ronnie. So all right, don't answer. If he was an uncle, you would have said yes, so let's just leave it alone. Anderson made a number of statements about Ronnie's mother earlier in the reading, which later he contradicted. Some of these were, You and she were close. She does feel she could have been closer to you, yes? Ronnie was a mama's girl which hasn't changed. I'm not trying to make you sound like a mama's girl. She's a woman of faith. She was not a religious woman. She belongs to a Christian sect. She's a Jew. Your mother is not the type of woman who admits she was wrong too easily. So she's admitting she was wrong. I was ruined. <laughs> Kind of stuck in my throat there, yeah, stuck in my throat. On some occasions when Ronnie answered, no, Anderson suggested that Ronnie was wrong, not Anderson, and that he wasn't going to argue with the dead person. Was this why Schwartz graded Anderson so highly? Anderson came up with the names Rose, Sam, Max, Ruth, Lillian, and Gertrude. He said Max was family, he wasn't, and that Ruth was dead, she wasn't. While Ronnie connected most of the names to great aunts and family friends, not one was her direct family. Schwartz rated Anderson's accuracy at 90%, while I rated his accuracy at zero. Susan Northrup reads Ronnie. Schwartz states that initially Northrop wasn't connecting with Ronnie, and as a result, her accuracy was not good. In my opinion Northrop got two questions correct when she said that Ronnie's parents died in the same bedroom and that their deaths were 10 months apart. Although it should be noted that originally, Northrop thought only one parent had died. Schwartz said Northrop had obtained a high accuracy rating. My own accuracy rating for Northrop is 6%. At the end of the HBO Dream Team experiment, Schwartz found it interesting that four of the psychics had all mentioned a dog. Did it matter how vague these mentions were? There now is a dog who walked into the room. Oh, it was Mother's and Papa's dog. They gave me the dog that walked into the room. Did your husband have a dog who passed? Something about a dog. Something about a dog. God, I keep seeing that little dog again. <laughs> um, he just kind of keeps wandering in and out. The dog is back. The dog is back. Mike Price died on the 5th of June, 1999, when he crashed into a tree and suffered a heart attack. Because of Mike's death four months after the HBO experiment, Schwartz suggests that Edward, talking to a dead Mike in February, may have been precognitive. 
This appears to ignore the statements Edward made about Mike's death, such as, the husband was in a coma, he wasn't. The husband's passing was quick and peaceful, it wasn't. There was a heavy respiratory problem that may be connected to him. There wasn't. Schwartz writes in his book that when Mike first attended the experiments, he believed that when we die, that is it. By the end of the day, after witnessing the psychic experiments, Schwartz says that Mike's entire worldview had been turned upside down. And now, because of his wife's stay with a group of self-proclaimed mediums, he was truly scared. In the linked video I ask the question, did Mike attending the psychic experiments put him on the path to tragedy? In the Miraville Silent Sitter experiment, four psychics would read ten sitters. During the initial period of each reading, the sitter would not speak. It would be up to the psychic to provide their information without being able to see or initially hear the sitter. However, only seven summarized readings were provided. John Edward reads Elaine. Elaine was Schwartz's mother-in-law. Schwartz says that Elaine asked Edward twice for a description of her dead husband, but Edward did not respond. When Elaine asked for specific information, Schwartz says that Edward sidestepped the question. Part of Edward's response was, as far as giving you the flowery loving messages and whatnot, that's not gonna come through me. So I kind of provide the information and the acknowledgements of here they are. Edward spoke about a male figure above, the number 7, July or the 7th of a month, problems with the heart, liver and pancreas, and the month of May. I graded all of these questions as being too broad. Schwartz makes an interesting observation during this reading when he states that the sitter made a number of mistakes, which confused Edward. Does this indicate that it is the sitter who is providing all the information, and not a dead person? Schwartz graded Edward's accuracy as being at 70 to 80 percent. I graded Edward at zero percent. And, Gemin reads Christopher, during the silent period, Gemin spoke of a woman named Edith, whose face was paralyzed shortly before her death. She also spoke of three Johns, with one John alive. She spoke of a young man who had died accidentally. Christopher did not know an Edith, but knew of several Johns and knew of a young man who had died accidentally. I class these as all being too broad. Gemin rubs her arm and reminds Christopher of an old football injury, rekindling memories of the pain he had suffered. At the completion of the reading, Schwartz comments that Christopher had been on a spiritual and emotional roller coaster ride that he would never forget. That Christopher had found his feelings of anger, pain, and sadness unexpectedly rekindled. Would you pay for a similar experience? I graded the reading with an accuracy rating of 0%. John Edward reads Christopher. During the silent period, Edward spoke about a difficulty in breathing. This is a common phrase I have heard many psychics use. Schwartz tells us that Edward provided Christopher's sister's names and a brother-in-law, but does not provide any examples, which makes it difficult to validate. Edward says that Christopher's mother died in February, but Schwartz does not tell us if this is correct. That she is surrounded by pink roses. Edward sensed a woman with an R name, who liked to crochet. Schwartz says this fits with Christopher's grandmother. I say it is way too broad. Edward asked if Christopher had thought about raising cows and if he was in a same-sex relationship. These are blatant questions, which anyone could ask, whether they are psychic or not. Weeks earlier, Christopher had joked about becoming a cowboy, but he was not in a same-sex relationship. Schwartz says he was astonished by this reading. I graded Edward at an accuracy of 0%. Susan Northrop reads Christopher. Northrop said she was getting the name Rose, or it was someone's fondness for roses. Schwartz states this is correct, because roses were Christopher's mother's favorite flowers. Schwartz says that Northrop was correct in saying that Christopher's mother was in a coma and suffered swollen legs before she died. Northrop saw goats in the mountains, which Schwartz saw as correct, because Christopher's grandfather had been a sheep herder. Lori Campbell reads Christopher. 
Although Campbell picked up nothing during the silent period, Schwartz said she made Michael Jordan like three pointers during her reading, but does not provide a transcript. He says that Campbell told Christopher he had a dog and described his house. After the reading, she said she pictured his grandfather attending his graduation. Christopher's grandfather had died one month before his graduation. Schwartz titled the last two readings, The Revealing Pat Price Readings. This was when John Edward and Susan Northrup individually read Patricia Price, whose husband had died months earlier. Remember, both Edward and Northrup had previously read Pat, and we know that Edward had spoken with her husband Mike when he was alive. This led Schwartz to say, we fully expected that the mediums would figure out who Pat was during the yes, no, periods. It should be noted that because Edward and Northrop could recognize Pat, this can no longer be considered a blind experiment. Once Edward and Northrop could hear Pat, these two readings turned out to be two of the most accurate readings I have ever witnessed. Without first using initials, Edward produces the name Mike, twice. Remember, when Mike was alive, Edward had asked Mike if he wanted to contact his dead son Mike. Out of the hundreds of readings I have reviewed, this is the only one in which a psychic produces two correct names. Edward said how the son had died before the father and asked if Pat rode a motorbike. She did. Considering how, in all his other readings, I average Edward with an accuracy of around 2%, this is amazing stuff. Susan Northrop's reading is also summarized, but is just as accurate, with her saying how the son died before the father. Schwartz tells us that watching both readings had been wrenchingly emotional. Schwartz counted the experiment as being highly successful. But he wondered if it would be enough to convince a skeptic. It has failed to convince me. The Canyon Ranch Totally Silent Sitter Experiment Three psychics would read five sitters, but only three of the fifteen readings are mentioned. During this experiment the sitters did not speak at all. However, the experimenter would watch for the sitter's shake of the head, or nod, and then say yes or no to the psychic. This allowed the psychic to refine their questions. Because most of the reading is summarized, we have no idea about how much information was provided to the psychics. Like in the previous HBO experiment, when Anderson was told no, after he stated that the son's death was beyond his own control. He also says beyond his control, do you understand? No. This then allowed Anderson to state later that the son had killed himself, because he now most likely knew that the son's death was under his own control. He does take his own life, correct? Correct. Because we have this video and the verbatim examples, we are able to see how Pat's answering no may have influenced Anderson's later statement that the son took his own life. Without these, we must rely on Schwartz's summaries only. This can be problematic. For example, even though Schwartz knew that Anderson had been told that the son's death was not beyond his own control, Schwartz still said he found Anderson's later revelation that the son took his own life stunning. John Edward Reed Sabrina Edward spoke about an older female and a two-dog connection. Schwartz says that Edward got that one of the dogs was a large poodle who was bad and would eat everything that the grandmother played a motherly role in the sitter's life. Edward said he needed to acknowledge there was a wedding. He said they were showing him daises. When the sitter's mother was married, her grandmother sewed a ring of daises into her hair. Schwartz said that just about 90% of Edward's information about the grandmother was correct. Most of the reading has been summarized by Schwartz. I grade the few verbatim questions as being too broad. There are not enough verbatim examples for me to grade this reading. John Edward Reed Sitter Number 4 Schwartz scores Edward's accuracy at zero, but suggests that Edward had continued reading the previous sitter. John Edward Reed's Gary Schwartz In the third and final reading, Edward tells Schwartz that Schwartz's dead mother has gate-crashed the reading. As a result, Schwartz answers Edward's questions directly, totally negating the whole premise of the experiment that the psychic would not hear the sitter's voice. Edward, as usual, asked questions. Was your gallbladder removed? No. Has your mother passed? Yes. Do you have a brother? Yes. 
But what convinced Schwartz was when Edward spoke of a milkman. Because Schwartz collected milk bottles when he was a kid, he was pretty sure Edward was talking about him. Schwartz's average accuracy rating for all five readings was 40%. The final experiment was called the Campbell White Crow Readings. In this experiment, psychic Lori Campbell individually read three sitters over the phone. Only one reading is covered, which was supposed to be the most successful of the three when she read another psychic named George Dalzell. Dalzell was hoping to be told about four names, instead he was given 31. Dalzell was able to match 11 of the names with friends, two with friends of a friend, one to his father, one to a great-grandfather, an auntie a granddaughter, and even a dog. Schwartz states that the amount of totally correct information Lori reported was mind-boggling. Yet no verbatim examples are provided, so there is no way for me to grade this. For example, we know that Campbell produced the name George, which was Dalzell's Christian name. But when Schwartz writes that the reading was for a person named George, we do not know if Campbell said this, or it is Schwartz's supposition. I am unable to provide an accuracy rating for Lori Campbell for this reading. In my opinion, these four experiments provide little to no proof of psychics communicating with the dead. As explained earlier, my opinion is formed by John Edward telling Pat her dead husband had been in a coma and has visited her in the past in spirit. Pat's husband is alive. John Edward talking to Schwartz's dead mother instead of the expected dead person. Edward spoke directly to Schwartz, thus invalidating the non-talking component of the experiment. John Edward and Susan Northrup reading Pat a second time, thus invalidating it being a double-blind experiment. George Anderson continually telling his sitter not to say no, that the dead person is always right, and they, the sitter, are wrong. George Anderson's contradictions when talking about Ronnie's mother. Lori Campbell producing 31 names when only four were required. Based on all these examples and the lack of specific information, in my opinion, this book provides no breakthrough scientific evidence of life after death. And he wrote a book called The Afterlife Experiments. And then I invited him subsequently, like 15 years later, he came to one of my events just as a guest. And at the end of the event, he like wrote something on Instagram. He was like, you know, based upon what I watched tonight and the validations that came through, you know, your accuracy was somewhere in the range of like 92%. I was like, dude, you're just supposed to be a guest tonight, not working. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Yeah.